anyone who feels like, man, money's boring or like money is hard. Well, when you fuse it with that more spiritual, feminine, emotive, creative side, there is so much magic inside of money. Maybe there's a call to go inward and just to relate to money in a more creative way. And, and maybe there's some things to heal there as well. Hey, Natalia, welcome to the show. So happy to have you. Shan, I'm honored to be here with you. Do you love that I call you Shan? I do actually, because uh, so funny, you actually don't even know this. My dad called me Shan and all the people closest to me call me Shan. Really? And I, I recently started just referring to myself as Shan because it was faster, but I actually just completely embraced everyone calling me that now. So it's, it's, I uh, love to shorten people's names and give them nicknames. It's just like <laughs> something I do with people a lot that I vibe with. Love it. Uh, so just, I know that we just introduced you in the episode, um, separately, but could you give our listeners a little bit of insight into who Natalia is and why you do what you do? Yeah. I mean, I, am. so I really feel like everything that I do at this point really unfolded almost accidentally. Um, I never intended on, I never intended on being like a, like for lack of a better term, I'm very, I'm very, I'm quite woo. I don't take myself too seriously, but it's like, I never really intended on being like a soulful CEO. Um, I never intended on even when I was doing astrology and tarot, which are just things that were really helpful and healing for me. I never thought that those tools could turn into an unbelievably successful business, online business. So um, I really have found that over the years uh, by following the challenges and really yearning for growth, that it's really allowed me to just continue to walk the path and see what unfolds next. But just to put it very simply, um, I consider myself a conscious business mentor. I uh, teach about money and I am an astrologer. So fusing the kind of the soulful with the, what I like to call the practical tactical is really powerful for me. And I love to work with spiritual uh, female entrepreneurs. So that's just, cause that's been my path. I know that path. Well, I didn't have any guidance, especially in my twenties. So, um, I know a little bit about me personally. Uh, I have a dog named Taro. I'm marrying the love of my life. He's a Capricorn. We're getting married in like less than a month um, or not less than a month. Thank God. No, less than two months. Oh, scared myself for a second. And uh, we live in Southern California and uh, I'm very, I love business. I love working on myself. I love learning and I am a beach and ocean enthusiast. So that's what I love about creating stability in my life, both financially and, uh, yeah, really financially is that it's, it's really allowed me to embrace the things that I love and to create more time for the things that I love, but I'm actually so busy. So (laughs) the the time part is still working on, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's definitely more there than when I was broke and like barely could pay my rent. So that's nice. So you have an interesting story and you have an interesting perspective because one of the things that I think makes you so unique is that you are a, um, spiritually driven and and creative person, as you put it a little bit, woo, but also you have an openness and, uh, um, I don't want to say an obsession, but a fascination, I'll call it with money and the concept of money, which I think that stereotypically a lot of woo and spiritual folks try to run away from the concept Mm -hmm. of money. Um, I'm, I can be very triggering for people. They're like, I don't get it. And I'm like, it's okay. You don't have to get it. It just might not be for you, but yeah. Isn't that funny how pairing the two together is just so it's very healing. Yeah. And what I would love to know is how you came to embrace money, the concept of money and became so passionate about teaching other people this. Yeah. So, well, Okay. So I bounced my first like check or like credit debit card or whatever when I was 16. And that was actually one of, of course, I'm sure I had felt shame before in my life, but that's a palpable memory for me where I remember standing in the bank and feeling shame, like the burn of shame. And I was like, Whoa, I mean, of course, 
now I can contextualize why, but I just knew, and I felt that I'd done something bad and I was wrong and something was wrong with me. And when I got into my twenties, I started my first business at 19. I actually started a jewelry, jewelry company. And, um, I had that business for almost nine years. There were times where I lived off that business, which I didn't know how to run a business. So there was that, but, um, that business was never really successful. It was very, I was afraid. I I was afraid of, of selling and I was afraid of money. I was afraid of success just as much as I was afraid of failing, but I actually felt more comfortable with failure. So throughout my twenties, really exploring things and not really letting myself go to any sort of pinnacle, um, was kind of the, the story. It was kind of the, the, it was the habit and the out picturing of what I thought was possible. So moving through my twenties, uh, I, I just started noticing like, wow, you can barely keep $50 in your bank account. You make money and then you spend it. Um, I just became just aware of these things every so often I'd be like, Oh, that's, there's something there. And then when I got, I, this might, this probably sounds funny, but it's like, I actually started studying Kundalini yoga. And when I started studying Kundalini yoga, a concept was introduced to me around prosperity. And for some reason that just really piqued my interest. And I got really fascinated by energetic, spiritual prosperity that could also lead to material abundance and material security. Now, the way I teach is that that's not the end of the story. It's like, there are things we must do, of course, to actually anchor that in our lives and to take care of money, as I like to say. So, um, towards the end of my twenties, I, I actually, I'll tell a quick story, but I went home to Idaho I'm from Arizona, but my family lives in Idaho now. And I, uh, I went home and at the time I had $200 in my bank account and I felt rich and I was talking to my mom. I was, I think I was 30 years old and I was talking to my mom and I said, mom, I have $200 in my bank account. It's like in there. And my mom looked at me with this worried look on her face. And I literally, I burst into tears and I said, mom, money is not meant for people like me. Like money is not like, it's not for people like me and I don't get it. I'm not meant to get it. And I just broke. And of course I share that story because that was a line in the sand moment where I really came to understand like, Oh, there's a, there, there's an issue here that's been perpetuating itself for years and I'm over it. And so after that, I remember I looked myself in the mirror at the end of that trip home. I looked myself in the mirror and I said, Natalia, I'm giving you my word that everything will change in the next year. I'm giving you my word. And I looked myself in the mirror and I said that, well, it did. And I really applied myself over the next year and the next two years to heal and, and to learn money on money's terms. And that's what I teach now because we can do all the manifesting, all the praying, all the visualizing. And that, in my opinion, is important. I think a lot of people, they just don't relate to money in that way or they don't want to. And that's okay. That's not their flavor. And that's not the way they relate to their lives. But a lot of people who find me, um, they really want to feel a deeper sense of connection and fulfillment through their life. So money is a part of life. So how can I relate to money in a way that feels satiating, healing, and aware? And so that was really what I came to learn in that year, year and a half of just applying myself and deciding that I would learn money on money's terms. Now, the second side of that is I learned money management. And, um, money management is what I'm very passionate about teaching and, uh, that changed my life single-handedly changed my life. So then it was like applying my, my woo stuff through this framework was really, really empowering and clarifying. What would you say were the major success factors in your ability to make that shift over that year? Like what were the, the key drivers? Would you say, what did it take? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, first things first, um, 
I was working a job that I did not like, and it was sucking my soul. And one day I was sitting in my, cause I actually was working at home. This was in 2018, I believe 2017, 2018, I was working at home. And I remember sitting there and being like, Hmm, what's a life coach. It just literally like popped into my head. And then I had a friend a couple of weeks later be like, you should be a life coach. And this is just the little ways the universe and life kind of responds to us. And so I was like, I'm going to look into that. And when I really started to feel into it, I was like, well, how do you do that? Who certifies you? What's the deal? Blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't find anything. But then when I really started to feel into it, I was like, ah, you know what? I'm like, I've been coaching people for the last eight years of my life. I'm an astrologer and tarot reader. Now for some, if you've never had a natal chart reading, or maybe even had your tarot cards read, like those are actually, well, especially when they're used from a space of integrity and empowerment, they are extremely clarifying tools of mentorship. The only thing that was missing from that part of my life of doing one-to-one work was that I didn't really have like containers for people to work in. I didn't have really the, the, what I'm obsessed with from coaching is that you have like active accountability. So I didn't have that with that, but I had the mentorship piece down. So the reason I tell that little um, story is just because I realized, oh, I have a skill that I could utilize to help others and fulfill what I want to do with my time. And so a big factor of that was starting my own business and going into it. 2018 was when I really went full force. 2017, beginning of 2018, I dabbled, but I really started to see how could I make more money on my own? I did astrology stuff. I wrote horoscopes for people, for brands. So I had little dabbles of money coming in, but I finally was like, how can I really apply myself to this business, apply myself to this framework? So I don't have to work for someone else. Cause I was draining all my energy, driving two hours in traffic to Vernon, California. And if you've never been to Vernon, don't worry about it. Probably don't want to go. Um, so that was a big factor was like, okay, how can I take my business more seriously and take myself more seriously? Um, as I mentioned, uh, I'd say the two factors that really transformed everything in the summer of 2018 was, uh, money management, learning money management, learning how to handle the money I had. I actually had a, I was on the, those row machines Mm -hmm. and I was like, what am I going to do? If I could just make $5,000 a month, if I could just make $5,000 a month and I'm in my head doing that. Well, guess what? I had already been making $5,000 a month, but I was, I had no organization. So I was spending $5,010 a month or who the hell knows what I was spending. I don't know. But in those months when I quit my job, started doing coaching, I was making money, but I didn't have a framework to organize it. So money management. And then the second part of it, which is a little bit more on the spiritual side, I started to meditate, pray. And I worked with a prosperity mantra that just changed my life. And I really started working with like, how could I relate to money in a way that felt peaceful for me? And then how could I also take care of money on money's terms? So those are really the three factors. It was the business. Mm -hmm. It was the inner work and some of the spiritual woo that I got really, like I allowed myself to dive into even deeper. And then most of all, it was managing my money and really going for it in my business. I have a really cool story about that, but if we, if we have time, I'm happy to share it. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So I went to this three-day seminar, um, called millionaire mind intensive. So it's from T Harbecker's work. He, his book called secrets of a millionaire mind took me seven years to read because I was so resistant to getting what was good for me. And I don't know if anyone can ever relate to that, but that was a big issue for me. I don't think I felt worthy of feeling peaceful. I don't think I felt worthy of that. I could feel good, um, and feel safe. So I 
would put off doing the things that were good for me, if that makes sense. I don't know if anyone totally. else can relate to that, but totally. that was a huge issue for me. So here's this book. And I it took me seven years to freaking read. And then I, he kept talking about the millionaire mind intensive. So I attempted to go to that twice. First time I left second time I committed. Cause I said, well, guess what? I left this a year ago and I'm still in the same fucking, sorry. Can I cuss? Yeah. Okay. I was in the same fucking place that I was a year ago when I yeah. attempted to go to this seminar. So I'm like, I'm going all in because if it is to be, it's truly up to me. I've got to apply myself. So I went to the seminar. I did the dances. I did the work. I cried. The journaling was so confronting for me. And, but I really was there to learn. I was really there to like change my life. And so, um, they had this offer it was to, you know, coaching offers. It was like, Mm -hmm. do the thing and you'll get one year and you'll get coaching for six months and blah, blah, blah. And I'd never been sold an offer like that before. I looked at my bank account. I looked at what the price was. I looked at my bank account. I looked at what the price was. I had about two, no, I think I had about $1,400 in my bank account and the down payment to do the payment plan was 1300. I called my parents and I said, please, this is going to change my life. Please believe in me one more time. And they were like, no, we, we love you, but you got to, if you're going to do this, you got to do it on your own. And I was like, shoot. Okay. Universe got you. So I literally look at my bank account. I look at the thing and I walk to the back of the room and I write my credit card. I write my debit card payment down. And she looks at me and she goes, these are the moments that change your entire life. I swear to God, it's like slow-mo. Like yeah. Matrix moment. Um, and I literally was like, all right, I'm just, I have no other choice because this $1,300 is getting taken out of my bank account tomorrow. I'm going to the dentist tomorrow, which I know is going to cost 300. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going all the way in and long story short, the next day I was able to put the the dentist on my credit card. Thank God. Um, cause by the way, at the time my credit card was maxed out for probably five years. I had no idea how to use credit. So that's another thing I teach now because I think we don't, we're not taught the credit system and I had no idea what credit was and how to use it healthfully. So I went home after this thing, I opened, uh, five bank accounts to start managing my money with, uh, like kind of a touch of what they taught, but I really did it in my own way. And I decided, all right, I have no money. I'm all in. I opened up my email list And I ran a sale for readings because I had been known as an astrologer for many years in astrology and tarot. So I ran a sale for my readings for blah, 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 five days only, whatever. I made $6,000 and that was more money than I'd ever made in my life. And then I sold a program later that month that I had a coach at the time who was very helpful for me that I haven't spoke much about, but then I sold out my first group program and I made my first $11,000. And then I could see, because I was managing my money, I had a clear view of what was going on. And all the while, as I mentioned, I was doing the inner work and I was very big in affirmations. I wouldn't let my mind go to a shitty place about money. I literally was like, I'm all in and I'm never ever turning back. And so that was the line in the sand for me. And then from there, within about six months, um, we were into the low six figures as a business. And last year we almost made a million dollars and we have healthy profit margins, which I just learned about last year. Oh, profit margins. Everybody toots about the their revenue, but like, what about your profit margins? So I finally, I'm learning business and learning money on my way. Mm -hmm. And I love just that that was a single moment where I was like, wow, this, I can change and I can change my life by applying information, new information in a new way. And that was that experience for me. And it was Mm -hmm. just revolutionary. So I don't know if anyone in your community or audience is maybe at that level where they're just, I was pretty helter skelter and not to say you need that to make the changes, but sometimes, sometimes you do. And I know there are people listening who feel like they're right there with you going, I'm in that place. Like, I feel like I can't get out of this. You know, I've dug myself into a hole so deep. I can't get out. And you mentioned two things that really stuck with me. One was finding peace 
And the other one was learning about money on money's terms. And I actually think that the opposite of that are the two main reasons that people are not able to break through their own money struggles. And one is the anxiety and the other is learning about money on their terms and not (laughs) money's. Cause it's more comfortable. I mean, quote unquote comfortable. Right. What do you mean by money's terms? Can you give an example of how you apply like learning money on money's terms versus your own? Oh yeah. I love that. Well, I was always trying to do money on my terms. Well, that wasn't working. I remember when I said $200 bank balance, I felt like a rich person. And my mom was like, Oh my God, you're, you're 30. And obviously I say that with so much love. It is an absolute privilege to be able to move past that income to, to move past that, uh, state of finances. And, I am so unbelievably in awe at what became available when I learned a new tool. And so the, when I talk about money on money, money's terms, that's really where I, here's my take on it personally. When we want to learn money on our terms, usually it's to our base level habits that aren't always empowering. They're, they're comfortable. Now money has a language, just like business has a language. The law of gravity has rules money. Obviously we make up the rules for money as a society and as a collective and whatever, but there are certain things. Here's what I mean. When I say that, if you spend more than you have, you will go negative If you are afraid to create, let's say like create more income, or you don't know what to do next, or you just feel like you're hitting a ceiling, it will not just magically change. You have to apply some sort of inertia to get that shift to come forward. And just think about anything with money. Like I think the biggest rule I would say, just from my personal experience is that if you spend more than you have, there's not going to be much for you. And if you don't organize and create clarity with money, I feel that money asks us because numbers ask us to be extremely honest and forthright. And that's where money stuff can get hard because like you said, it's anxiety producing. It can feel painful to do this work. That's why I always have the emotional, um, and even soulful component, because I think we, when we acknowledge how we feel, and we also trust a bigger, bigger perspective as to why we're moving through the challenge we're moving through. I think that that can create a lot of, uh, power to help us move forward. So money's rules. Let me think of like, I guess I thought I could outline more, but when I'm really thinking about it, I guess like debt, like, like the debt system, I think like anything around just like our income, like, what would you say, Shan? I mean, you're more the numbers person than I am obviously, but what do you feel like are some of like money's rules from your perspective? When you say that, what I think of is like a board game that we're all playing and there's rules to the game on how to win. But then there's some people who are like, I'm just going to move the piece around and I'm going to go the other way. And I'm going to do that. But it's like, you're never going to win if you're just, <laughs> yes. if you're just making up your own rules. Absolutely. And That's I what was I'm thinking always of. doing that. I was always like, well, I have $50. I'm going to spend $30. It's just like, it's like, our, I don't know what's going on in my bank account. I'm not looking at my bank mm-hmm. balance. Like, it's like, I feel like money runs on just mm-hmm. a very, so in the, in let's say like a spiritual context, we talk a lot about masculine and feminine energy, not about gender. I feel like that's been hijacked a little because it's like, oh, if you're a woman, you're feminine, if you're a man, you're man. No, that's not, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is energetic polarity. And we all have masculine and feminine within us. 
I think that when we get out of balance with anything in our own lives is when we are way too far on one or the other in an unhealthy way. So without going too deep down that rabbit hole, something I'd love to teach about money is the masculine and feminine components, but money as let's just say money in terms of our economy or just the system, capitalism, the systems that we, the frameworks that we work within runs on what I would call more of a masculine polarity, meaning you got to manage your money. You got to invest your money. You got to know the numbers. It's very much like clarity, planning, structure, action. And of course there's a deeper conversation there, but that's something I like to teach my women is that there's an active masculine component to money. That's very important. And I'll just speak for myself as a little bit more of an empathic sensitive soul. I was always like, I'm not doing any of that. That's intimidating. Like I don't get like Wells Fargo teaching me how to balance my checkbook is like not working for me. So for me, it was finding teachers that I felt could kind of speak my language and get a little more on the creative energetic side, which is really what T Harv Eckers work does so well. And what the, um, and really what that three day seminar did for me is it showed me that there's more than just one side. And, um, I just, I offer that in, in hopes that anyone who feels like, man, money's boring or like money's hard. Well, when you fuse it with that more let's say spiritual, feminine, emotive, creative side, there is so much magic inside of money. And you'll hear a lot in, (laughs) in the wellness world about manifesting money. And of course, like, I think there has to be a lot of accountability, love and integrity in that kind of conversation, but it's definitely, it makes money fun. And I say Mm -hmm. have fun, like, and for some people being totally of like, I like my dad is a Scorpio retired CFO CPA, like for that man, like numbers and like formulas and like all the things that's fun for him. And that's awesome. But for me, I was like, Mm -hmm. I need more. And so if you feel like you need a little bit more, maybe there's a call to go inward and just to relate to money in a more creative way. And, and maybe there's some things to heal there as well. And you, you hit the nail on the head with the masculine feminine, but also the resistance people have toward the masculine side, the very strong masculine end of the spectrum, because I studied the masculine for years. I have mastered the masculine side and lived in that. I mean, literally I worked on wall street, how much more literal masculine (laughs) can you get than that? But I'm also, I am, I, I love what I have learned in the last few years since graduating. Like I was, it was education-based. It was, we learned math. Like you learned two plus two equals four. Yeah. We learned debits and credits. It was just like the foundational basics of what we learned when we were younger as accountants are like common sense to us now. And we, what we've done is as accountants, we have lost touch as a profession, I'll say, and I'm being very generalizing. A lot of us have lost touch with how it feels to be a normal person who doesn't know Mm. this stuff and who doesn't understand it. And the the problem is that it's not the accountant's fault. They forget how, imagine if you had to teach English, if it's your first language, if you had to teach English to someone who's never learned a new language and you've, and maybe you don't speak another language. It's like, how do I teach this? Oh, when that's I a lo- great when, comparison. When I learned it, when I was, te- I don't know how I learned that, that, that this is bottle. I, I don't know how I learned that this is up in this. Is down. Yeah. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain that, but that's yeah. what goes through my head. When people ask me questions, I go, Oh, you don't know that. Hold on. How do I explain this? You're so and good at that. You're it's... like my dream because Michael, <laughs> Michael King is who connected mm-hmm. us. Yeah. And, um, and Michael was a saving grace for me. And he was so patient with me. I was like, am I your worst coaching client? He was like, Nope. He's like, you, he goes, you're, you're giving effort and I can work with effort all day. Cause, cause I was so resistant when he's teaching, when he's walking me through cash flow and Mm -hmm. budget projections, like things that I I had never thought about in my life, but I love my mission so much that Mm -hmm. I was like, I will learn this. I will show up. I will 
figure this out. And it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's still a practice for me, but at the end of the day, like, I'm so grateful it led me to you because you are so excellent at explaining things in a way like that helped me conceptualize. And I feel like my dad, I mean, and truth be told, like God bless my dad and he's a wonderful man. And we're, we're quite close now, but a lot of the roots of my money craziness, and I don't blame him because it's all, it is what it is at this point. It's what I do with it now as an adult, but a lot of my stuff came from, he kind of made me feel like, oh, well, you just don't get it. And that's, and he didn't mean to, it's just because exactly what you said. It was over the head. He didn't know how to bring it to your level. Exactly. He was just like, I literally like, and, and didn't have that teaching mentality of like, let me try to help you figure this out. It was like, you just don't get it. So who cares? <laughs> like- <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of accountants feel that way. A lot of accountants totally. are, and it's not their fault. They're impatient or anything. It's the, uh, like, I don't have time to explain this at this level because totally. I won't, they want to do, just do the work. And there's a, yeah. a special small group of accountants who are teachers at heart that I think yes, yes. That you can tap into. And I, I claim to be one of them. And I appreciate anyone who is one because we just want to help the client succeed first and yeah. foremost. And then there's a lot of people who don't mind sitting in a cubicle and cranking away on spreadsheets and never talking totally. to the client. So there's, totally. there's a lot of different personalities. There's, all, there. there's all, of course we had never, I'm learning that more and more as I get older is like, mm-hmm. Natalia, any generalization you literally make applies to like 0.012012, whatever of the yeah. population. So it's like that, that's the thing that I, I am so I'm so grateful truly for, you know, cause here's the thing, like my business means so much to me and I'm so happy. And that's why I teach. It's not always easy, but I, that's why I teach. It's why I teach conscious business. That's why I love to share money management because these were all tools of empowerment and truly liberation for me, mm. because when I was barely making it and just working three jobs, attempting to build my business, whatever I was doing at the time, it was extremely, um, it was, it was stressful and it was painful at times because, and that was a lot of by my own doing, um, with the way that I spent and also my fear and refusal to really go for it with money and, and really hold a higher expectation for myself. But it, it's all happened as it was meant to. And it's been really incredible just to have a transformation and then to share what I've learned because it's, I'm so grateful to the people who have shared what they've learned so I could make some major changes. Yeah. And I I think I've shared this with you too, but my dad was also a CPA and, but so he had that heart of a teacher. And that's the interesting thing is he would, before I knew how to drive, I knew how to balance a checkbook and hit manage your credit card. (laughs) It's awesome. I knew what a stock was when I was 12 because my dad didn't want to buy me a toy. He was like, I'm going to go buy you a piece of the whole toy store. How cool is that? Oh, brilliant. And I learned, this is where it comes from though. I learned all these things when I was 12, 14, 16, 18, when it had to be explained to me like a child. (laughs) And that's brilliant. I remember how I learned it. Mm -hmm. I always remembered his analogies, his explanations. And I would remember how it made me feel like, oh, it's like this. I got it now. It helped me simplify and actually, um, what's the word? Like dilute down to the core concept Yeah. without getting so muddled up in the content of what was going on, like the context. So it was not to create alliteration for no reason, but (laughs) there's, it was more about conceptual, like what does it mean when we say this versus what is the effect it has? Yeah. So like understanding yeah. debt and credit cards, my dad was like, you know, credit card, isn't your money. If you're, you have to, you have to pay that off every month or you're going to, he made it sound like I, someone was going to show up at my house and beat me. If I had a credit card balance, that's how <laughs> afraid I was of having a credit card balance. Wow. That I never until it's here's what's funny. Not until I was 30, did I mm-hmm. ever have a balance on my credit card statement that I didn't pay off because, and again, I'm lucky in that sense. I'm blessed that I was able to do that, but also because I lived in a means where I said, well, whatever I do, I can't, (laughs) 
<laughs> I can't go over totally. this. This is the ceiling. Totally. I cannot go over. I cannot spend more than this. I can't, yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm, I don't know what's going to happen, but I had the fear of, yes. I had the fear of someone coming to my house and beating me up. If I yeah. went over this threshold, like my whole career is ruined. My credit score is ruined. If I carry wow. one balance one time, wow. I had so much um, pressure, mm-hmm. but I don't even know where it came from. Cause no one ever told me that, but there was this in, innate sense of credit is not your money. You're borrowing people's money and they're going to come after you for that money. If you don't give it back mm. type of mentality and learning these concepts in a way that was so easy to understand when I was younger has mm. enabled me to explain it, but it's also opened me up to, so here's the thing. I meet folks that have backgrounds like yours. I meet folks, my clients, other people. And over the past three years, I'm not going to lie. When you said the generalizations and the judgment, I of course was like, like, how do we, how do you not know this? <laughs> and I came from a place of judgment when I graduated school. Cause remember I've been surrounded by accountants for four years in a college, then surrounded oh by, gosh. then surrounded by accountants for 10 years in a career in a big four firm where I talk to accountants all day, every day, including my family. Wow. So it's like, it's like, you're all speaking the language. It's like, right. you speak the same language. So when you are in, so for example, you plot me into another environment and it's like, I'm going to a foreign country. Totally. And I feel like, wait, wait, you guys don't know this. Oh, I go from being the dumbest person in a room full of advanced accountants <laughs> to then being like the smartest person in the room of non-accountants when it comes to taxes. And I mm. realized that I had value to share because I was so humbled by mm. my, my, like this imposter syndrome, right. Of like, well, yeah. I'm not good enough because I'm not as good as these guys. But yeah. then I realized I had value to offer. And that's really where it opened up. And when you brought up the masculine feminine, it was interesting because I'm going, I was 100% on the masculine end of that spectrum because it was just systematic, scientific, and just part of life. Mm-hmm. Like I, the, the yeah. money rules, it's how it's done. I lived by the rules of money. Yes. Right. Totally. So like Shannon operated under money's terms. Yeah. So I was like, what other terms are there? Mm-hmm. Right. Like what other, what other rules are there? So mm-hmm. it's interesting because coming from the other side of it, I saw just as much value in understanding the feminine side of it because I realized that not everyone had that, you know, scientific view of it. And there are people who really struggle with the concept of money. And I learned about this a few years ago, especially getting more exposure to, you know, some of our shared networks and our mentors and other folks where I said, oh, that's so interesting. What do you mean that you have trouble with money? What do you mean it causes anxiety? And it wasn't like, I wasn't trying to judge or be like, you know, I was genuinely curious yeah. because I'm going, I've never seen this before. Tell me more about this. And it was so interesting to me that I actually became even more passionate about talking to these folks and saying, oh, no, no, no. Let me tell you how I learned it. I think this will help. Yeah. And that's actually from which a lot of that comes from when I try to explain something. And you know this because we've been on calls together where I'll try three different ways until something sticks. And I'm like, it's like this, or it's like this, or it's like this. And then you go, oh, and I go, okay, that was the one that worked. And, and financial peace. It's it's funny. Like that's something. So in, uh, magical women and money, what Mm -hmm. a name MWMM It's my membership. Mm -hmm. We have five success tracks. So we have income enhancing debt, healing, financial Mm -hmm. peace and manifesting money management and investing and business basics and growth. Yeah. And the third, that third one is really popular and really powerful financial peace and manifesting. And that is really a concept to work with because if let's just think about our brains and how our nervous system works, if you are in the limbic brain, if you are in the fight or flight, you are, you, you, you are, you don't have as much access to your brain's functioning capacity because your brain and your blood flow are just like, we just have to survive. So if you are approaching money and it, and it can be incredibly anxiety producing, cause you're looking at the numbers. It's kind of like what I said that day mm-hmm. when I made that decision, you're looking at your bank account, you're looking at the numbers, you're looking at your bills, you're looking at the things. And it's like, it can create a lot of cortisol in the system. And I just, you know, I actually offer a free meditation that's just called, I think it's just like a money piece visualization meditation and it's with binaural beats. It's literally to get your focus in a new space to help you feel more resourceful financially, because I, the way that I teach, and even though it might not be for everybody, but the way that I teach is two part. 
It's that masculine feminine, like we were talking about. It's the taking care of yourself at that energetic, emotional, spiritual level, which then takes care of you um, tenfold. Because for me, when I was trying to do everything by money's rules and everybody's rules, it just never worked for me. And it wasn't until I brought in the healing and more of the peace and more of the inner work and uh, like creative attention that I could have towards money and then applied that to money's rules of what money needed from me. That was the, for me, the magic formula. So maybe just like a quick takeaway, um, just for anyone who's like, Oh, I want to explore this a little bit more. Well, our focus is the most powerful thing that we have and whatever you focus on truly expands. And that's even spoken about in, um, quantum physics. Like, do you know what that's called? Where you like, look at something, it blinks into existence. When you look away, it blinks out of existence. It's like the power of our focus is unbelievably massive. And we have physiological responses to what we focus on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying bypass where you're at. I'm not saying, you know, forget all of the, you know, the, the, the hyper tactical rules. Cause there are those, but I say first, especially if you're in a tough place financially to pay attention to how you feel and take care of yourself, because then you're going to have more resourcefulness to then learn the tools that will help you make a transformation. And that's what I'm passionate about. And that's why I feel like I'm here because, you know, I used to do astrology and tarot and I loved it. Now I meet with women and I do free money management sessions where I literally sit with a woman and we, it's about a 25 minute session. And I go through my money management system. I help her set up her accounts in this little Canva document that I have. She then gets that download and she can go and manage her money in the way that absolutely fits where she is at the moment and get a little bit of mentorship. I just came to realize that for me is the deepest tool of empowerment that I could offer. I still do astrology. I still do all the things I love it all. But when it really like the amount of joy that I feel when I get off one of those calls is like nothing I've ever experienced because I know the power and the freedom that can come from feeling more grounded financially. And it's just, it's a gift. It is. I know exactly how you feel when you can share that with other people. That's the ultimate. And and when you can make an impact, that's when you really feel it. It's the best. It's yeah. the best. I feel grateful for that. So what I'd like to do, Natalia, is as we wrap up, I love to ask our guests three rapid fire questions. And then I want to hear more about your membership and how folks can get in touch with you. So yeah. diving in, Natalia, what is one investment that you can't live without? Oh my God. Is this like an investment, like an actual investment or however like just like- you wish to interpret that question? Oh my God. It is, it is intentionally vague. Without. Oh, honestly, I, I love eating out. Shannon knows this. Like I love eating out. Um, I love eating out and that is an investment in my pleasure that I really enjoy. Like I love to cook. I love making my own food, but I also just really enjoy, like if there's a restaurant or like a juice bar, you know, Southern California, very V blessed. There's a lot of great food here. And that is definitely investment. I do feel that I couldn't live without. And I obviously love all my investments too, but I guess I don't look at that them that way, but I probably should. So I'm going to think about that later today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is, what is one thing that you learned about money that turned out not to be true? Oh my God. That money's only for certain people that only certain people get money. I think that that's what I'm so passionate about is that you can find a way to relate to money. And my approach is obviously more on the energetic, creative, spiritual side. But, um, I just think that like wealth and riches are not just for certain people. And that's what I find so fascinating about money is it has a neutral consciousness. And if you want to create it, there is absolutely a way where there is a will. So that's something I, I, I love. And that's been a big shift in my uh, perspective. I love that. And lastly, what makes you feel like a millionaire? Oh my God. You know, what makes me feel like a millionaire, like 
everything that I do truly. I actually wrote that down the other day. I was like, what, what would your millionaire self do? And my millionaire, I didn't know until my dad broke it to me. Not very gently. He's like, I was like, dad, I'm going to be a millionaire soon. Blah, blah. He goes, no, you're a millionaire when your net worth is millions. And I was like, Oh, I was like, I was so disappointed. But anyhow, um, <laughs> what helps me feel like a millionaire? I mean, really, I love what I do. And I feel like when I have time spaciousness paired with impact, like where I get to do something that feels incredibly impactful and helps move the needle forward for someone in their life, that's magnificent. Mm-hmm. And then when I can work from my personal hotspot from my favorite park on the ocean or at the beach. I feel like a millionaire. Love it. I would, I would too, if I could do that too. And <laughs> I can, I'm working on that in Costa Rica. I'm working on getting a good hotspot. Get, you got to get that, ho- that hotspot that it just dropped into my phone one day. And I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, I have a hotspot. I was like, this is great. I never want to work at my desk anyway. So I take it <laughs> everywhere. Perfect. And uh, Natalia, tell us more about your membership and how folks can get more information and uh, follow along and see what you're up to. Yeah. So the membership's called Magical Women and Money. We are open to anyone and everyone. So you don't have to be a woman. If you feel called towards uh, my way and style of teaching money and feel like you could benefit from one of our five success tracks and our community, then MWMM could be a really nourishing space for you um, to get all the information. It's just magicalwomenandmoney.com. We open enrollment every so often. We have a wait list and the wait list is always first to know that we're, that we're open for enrollment. And, um, it's really a beautiful space. I go live in there twice a month. I do live trainings once or twice a month. We do something called soul embodiment, which is very woo, but it's fun. I be, I used to be an electronic music artist and I was a DJ. So I love to make playlists. So we basically do like a 25 minute dance party and just let those worries go, let those anxieties go and wake up that accessibility to our energy and our potential to do what we got to do for our money goals. So it's a lot of fun. It's a very unique approach and it's just a really beautiful space. So magical women and money.com. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Well, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show and sharing Damn. all of that with us, including your story and your experience. We really appreciate it. Thank you. This was so much fun. I can't wait to have you on my podcast <laughs> and uh, thank you guys so much. Nice to meet Absolutely. you. Tell, uh, tell everyone your podcast name so they can also listen there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm very active on Instagram. It's just at Natalia underscore Benson. Please come say hi, nataliabenson.com. And then um, my podcast is just called Natalia Benson, the podcast. Beautiful. Easy to figure out. Guys. Easy. Yeah. Easy to find that all of that will be in the show notes for you too. Thank you, Natalia. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.